So uh, I think and I believe the photo and uh, the work and like uh, f uh, the films can show the reality meaning of our life than more speak because I think and I believe the image can describe your feeling more than uh, the talk sometimes a little bit. So just and now I'm focusing a lot uh, for my uh, in photo and uh, on all my works about uh, how how we are live uh, in Gaza uh, and now the, I think and uh, the, in this time. Uh, the border in Gaza, all, all borders in Gaza was closed because of the situation and it's uh, worse than uh, last assault uh, and uh, everything uh, is going for worse but uh, I think and I believe we will keep our smile and we will never give an up down and uh, just <laughs> Um, so how do you think art can help cross-border relations between Gaza and Israel, but also other countries where there, there's tension? Uh, uh, I think uh, the art is, uh, is, is the biggest way to, to describe your feeling uh, and show uh, what you uh, have in, in your mind to, 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 the, to, to, to the whole world. Uh, because uh, it's it's real meaning, you know. When you you when you speak or you uh, or you or you need to to express or you you want to express about something, sometimes the art will describe this meaning more than anything. Because I believe the the image and the art and. Uh, everything uh, will be described more uh, than than uh, okay we have uh, all of uh, writers and uh, good speakers not like me I'm not a uh, good speaker in political ways but I can show I can I can do uh, I can do everything uh, like filming I can take take a photos and the drawing and a lot of things can I do it to show you the real meaning of uh, our life as a meaning for the arts way. So, uh, I can, uh, the artist, uh, I think and I believe no one can stop him to, to, to do what he needs because uh, the arts it's uh, like uh, something in the space and you can, uh, you can try to be in this uh, point of space to, to describe yourself more and more than anything. Okay. So, especially with the, the second film that was showing a lot of um, life in Gaza uh, over the summer, and you, you, the footage of the bombings, you took some of that. What's it like for you to be able to leave Gaza, to come to Norway and, and share with us here what it's like? You know, it's, uh, it's the first time for me in the Europe, and specific in Norway, and, and specific more in Tromso, and now in Kirkenes. <laughs> so it's uh, very nice to 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 get this chance to, to show to the world to the, to the whole world what's happened during the Israeli assault over Gaza. You know, um, I worked with the ambulance during uh, 51 days of. Uh, is, uh, of of a blood of uh, massacre and I witnessed a lot of things uh, during the Israeli assault of our Gaza. Uh, the last song it's called We Teach Life Sir, it's by Rafif Ziyada who uh, wrote this uh, poem and uh, there is a group in Gaza called Water Band. Water Band is a, it's a small group and Palestinian musician they made, the, uh, made a melody for this uh, poem and make it like song. During the Israeli assault in the first ceasefire, they called me Muhammad. Please, we, we need, we want to do something to show to the world, to the world, uh, what's happened during the the last assault, and they, we need to, we want to do something. So, uh, and they know me. I worked with the ambulance, and I I have a lot of footage and materials for uh, for the assault and more more about about me. 
uh, they call me Mohamed Wini. We want to make uh, this song like video clip, and we. Uh, uh, I told him, okay, uh, uh, then I I'm ready, and we will do it. So and we did it like uh, you know, uh, and I worked with this song uh, without anything, without any electricity. You know, uh, we don't have any uh, any uh, an electricity in Gaza. Uh, just it came for six hours by the whole day. It's too difficult to do to do anything uh, during this uh, this uh, this hours of uh, of uh, electricity. So when I made this uh, song, I was in I were in the hospital and I just take my laptop and uh, working for editing and sometimes the laptop is shut down because it's not workstation to do or did uh, your work on it so finally I I make it in, in during the Israeli assault in the first ceasefire and uh, alhamdulillah everything is doing well and uh, it's make uh, this song make a public uh, public way to show uh, what's happened during the, uh, the Israeli assault of Borja just sorry for today. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, okay. showing your films and bringing them here and traveling all this thank way. Thank you. Thank you for uh, for everything. Thank you to give me this chance to speak and show a little bit of my work. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll grab our panelists back here, please. Oh. Ah. <laughs> and we will wrap up the evening. Good luck. <laughs> Is that how? guys. He's clever. He's clever. He's very good. 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 He's so, I wanted to wrap up with um, one of the themes in Muhammad's video, which is uh, personal safety, um, safety for people who want to move around, who have uh, want freedom of speech, um, and just get your thoughts to close out the evening on how cross-border communication can um, assist in this for journalists. You know, how can we effectively build a network that will allow journalists to work safely in parts of the world where the rights that we're used to in, in Norway and certainly in Canada aren't as respected. Difficult for me as a Norwegian to talk about uh, safety because that's a, that's a totally another world uh, down in the Middle East or in uh, some parts of Russia. I mean, and Norwegian journalists don't know what safe, lack of safety is. Uh, but but uh, to my experiences working in Russia, I, have, I know quite a few Russian reporters that have been uh, in jail uh, for no particular reason or for exactly for particular reasons. Uh, but uh, to my, my experience is, is, is that uh, don't let it go in silence. That's the way uh, cross-border journalism can help to this. If there is a problem with a journalist someplace, voice up, write about it, report about it. No one can uh, be stuck in a jail in Arkhangelsk without getting international attention. That's what we can contribute to. Uh, in the song, uh, during the, in the film, there was a there was a there was a sentence that maybe problems will be solved if we won't teach uh, kids hate. So I think I think that's that's I that's 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 true, and um, the cooperation. And also for journalists, cross-border cooperation, especially in the conflict, uh, it's um, it's also about trying to, as also Thomas said, trying to report things, finding truth, which is not always easy. And and believe me, it's a it's a very complicated it's a very complicated process. And sometimes you are simply not able to find the, the, the whole picture, so you are just trying to 
to get uh, into something uh, with your best intention. So <laughs> I am saying to public, please don't judge us that sometimes we are, journals are not perfect. We are not <laughs> perfect human beings. We are just trying. To, but I think every honest journal is in trying. It's trying to find a, uh, it's trying to find out how where, how things are working and trying to find truth. If you are, it doesn't matter if you are Palestinian, Israeli, Russian, Norwegian, Slovak. So, and and, and talking about safety, uh, it's a. <laughs> let's admit it. Sometimes it's it's. If you are trying to find out what truth is, sometimes it's dangerous. It's not about safety. Well, after watching such a film, it's quite difficult to discuss our small problems in our comfortable piece of land. So it's absolutely another world. But if you ask about my experience and when I work in Norway, I think that uh, journalists um, uh, is a, a journalist is a very respectful profession here in Norway and they are respected more than in Russia and I think we have to blame ourselves first of all for that but I think that this trust is a good protection for me for example. So the film is uh, obviously very emotional and makes a very strong impression. And I think the main conclusion that can be drawn from the film is that nobody needs war. Uh, be it adults or children uh, or uh, other people, uh, they don't need war. Uh, it is some politicians uh, who need war. And uh, when their plans are implemented, it often destroys lives of uh, tens, and hundreds, and thousands of people. And when uh, military situations like this emerge, the conditions for journalists uh, change very rapidly. So any country that has enjoyed peace for quite a long time, uh, simply its journalists are simply not ready to work in the hot spots. Неизбежно возникает дискуссия о стандартах. And then it, it immediately entails a discussion on standards. Все мы знаем стандарты, две точки зрения. We all are all aware of the standards. You have to have uh, tools. Uh, you have to have uh, different opinions. You have to verify the sources. But how do you achieve that in a military conflict? Дать слово врагу, который только что убил кого-то из твоих соотечественников. Do you give the word uh, to an enemy who just killed one of your compatriots? Послушать его аргументы. And listen to their arguments. Это очень сложное испытание, и на этот вопрос вот сегодня пока украинские журналисты не ответили. And that's a very uh, complicated endeavor, and uh, and the Ukrainian journalist has not uh, responded to that uh, challenge yet. Что важнее, воля к победе, единство в борьбе? Или стандарты европейские стандарты журналистов. So what is more important, uh, the will to win, uh, the desire for unity in the fight, or to or the upholding of the European journalist standards? Где профессиональная необходимость рисковать, а где неоправданный риск? 
where there is a justified risk uh, professionally or where there is unjustified risk. Uh, taking too much courage uh, during the hostilities and thus uh, uh, putting oneself and other people in danger. Поэтому любой военный конфликт меняет ситуацию в регионе, so меняет отношения any, людей. Any military conflict uh, changes the situation in the region and it changes the attitude of the people. И uh, знаете, особенно это испытание для нашей профессии. And this is a, a special uh, trial. Uh, uh, for our uh, trade, for our um, profession. Потому что возникает соблазн приврать. Because you are tempted to lie a bit. Что-то преувеличить, что-то скрыть. To exaggerate something, to conceal something. Иногда в интересах страны, а иногда в ложно понятых интересах страны. Sometimes in uh, in the interest of the country, or sometimes in the uh, falsely perceived interest of the country. No, but uh, the trade is revengeful. Uh, because every small uh, lie uh, creates a distorted information space. Поэтому в идеале было бы хорошо, чтобы войн и конфликтов не было. So, idealistically, it would be great to have uh, no wars or conflicts. But since uh, this is uh, not achievable for the time being, so every journalist must be able to answer these uh, very complex and important questions to themselves. Great, thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? I know Twitter's a little slow right now. Does anybody have any questions uh, that the panelists can answer other than where the submarine is? <laughs> no? All right. Then I think unless there are any last words, we're, we're all finished. Or in <laughs> well, there you go. We can start looking there. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming, and uh, thank you to our audience. I would like to thank everyone who stayed here until the end.